The number of COVID-19 cases in Lubbock is growing and so is the concern of city leaders. Coming up, we'll have a look at the latest statistics and the state of the city's medical facilities. Texas Tech campus is taking time this week to celebrate the diverse cultures and groups that make the university unique. We'll have a special look at International Week 2020 next. And the Texas Tech Athletic Department has two teams meeting up with ranked competition this weekend. We'll have a preview of both games and where you can catch the action in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Berkeley Adams. And I'm Ryan Heller. After a surge of COVID-19 cases here in Lubbock, city officials officially implemented rollbacks to reopening guidelines earlier this week. On Tuesday, city officials announced that bars would close and many businesses would have to reduce their occupancy to 50% per Governor Greg Abbott's executive order G832. The announcement came after local hospitals had more than 15% of hospitalized patients who had tested positive for COVID-19 for more than seven days. Along with the restrictions on businesses, some elective or non-emergency medical procedures were also limited or discontinued. Yesterday afternoon, city officials, hospital administrators, and other community leaders took part in a town hall Zoom meeting. During the discussion, leaders from Lubbock's medical community expressed serious concerns about the current state of COVID-19 in the hub city. Administrators from Covenant and UMC both stated that the current problem is not the availability of beds for COVID patients, but a lack of staff to handle the increasing number of hospitalizations. Both hospitals are having a shortage of staffing due to doctors and nurses getting infected or having to quarantine due to exposure. There is also a statewide shortage of health care workers, with many nurses being sent to harder hit areas, such as El Paso. At the conclusion of the town hall, city leaders pleaded with the public to make more responsibility and reinforce the need for masks, social distancing, and to avoid gatherings. Following yesterday's town hall, City officials released the latest COVID-19 numbers for Lubbock, which included a record 673 new cases and seven additional deaths. Yesterday's number of new infections eclipses the city's previous record of 342 cases, which was reported on Monday. As of today, Lubbock County has had 18,712 positive tests since March of this year, and 3,298 are currently active. MCTV is actively following the increase of COVID-19 here in Lubbock, and we will bring more updates as they become available. In other news, International Week 2020 is currently taking place here at Texas Tech. The week-long set of events is a chance for the university to celebrate many cultures and people groups that are part of the campus community. Earlier today, the Office of International Affairs hosted a drive through open house in the parking lot north of the International Cultural Center. Starting at 11.30 a.m., TTU facility and staff were invited to drive by and pick up a complimentary bag filled with special gifts. The bag included a t-shirt, mug, restaurant gift certificates, and even a cookbook created by the OIA. The annual open house is typically hosted inside of the International Cultural Center, but the event was changed to a drive through concept due to COVID-19 concerns. What we do here is showcase everything the university does to internationalize our curriculum, to internationalize our research efforts, to internationalize our engagement activities. So that's the purpose. The purpose is to celebrate everything that we do for internationalization of our campus. Today's event was also originally scheduled to take place on Wednesday but it was rescheduled after the Tech Campus was hit by a round of winter weather early in the week. The OIA's drive through open house wrapped up around 1.30 p.m. after all the gift bags had been handed out. Like many celebrations this fall, International Week 2020 included a schedule of mostly virtual events. But there was one other in-person opportunity held this past weekend that gave members of the Tech and Lubbock communities an opportunity to learn about the university's cultural diversity. On Sunday, the Office of International Affairs hosted their annual Culture Fest event in several locations across the Tech campus. From 2 to 5 p.m., attendees could stop by the International Culture Center, the Sub, and Urbanowski Park gazebo to have a global experience without leaving the Hub City. We've got a variety of things happening. 
students tabling, sharing their culture, doing crafts, um, doing dances and teaching, teaching dances, um, playing games, doing things like that. Like today's drive through open house, Culture Fest was changed due to COVID-19 concerns. To promote safety, the event was held outside and multiple locations were used to reduce the number of people gathering in one place. International Week 2020 was scheduled to have one last in-person event tomorrow evening to celebrate Dias de los Muertos, but it has now been canceled in light of the rapidly increasing number of COVID infections. The event was originally scheduled at the International Cultural Center, but Office of International Affairs staff are now encouraging everyone to visit the Dias de los Muertos virtual gallery, which went live yesterday on the OIA website. To view the gallery, visit international.ttu.edu and click on Art Exhibits under the Community Outreach and Events tab at the top of the page. Earlier this week, the South Plains area experienced the first winter storm of the season after a strong cold front moved onto the area on Sunday night. By Monday, the temperatures dropped into the 20s and a mix of rain, sleet, and snow made its way across Lubbock on Monday night. On Tuesday morning, Texas Tech officially made the decision to cancel classes due to unsafe driving conditions. And classes were delayed until 10 a.m. yesterday morning. Temperatures remained at or below freezing all day Tuesday. And highs finally reached above the freezing mark after sunrise on Wednesday. Snow flurries continued through yesterday afternoon. But with the higher temperatures, most of it didn't stick. And ice turned to puddles and mud by last night. So, after an early winter, will the Lubbock area be seeing a return to fall conditions as we head into the spookiest weekend of the year? MCTV's Madison Harden joins us in studio with the latest look at the forecast. Madison? Thanks, Ryan. And although temperatures here have been a bit of a roller coaster, starting out last week in the 70s, dropping all the way down to the mid-20s the past couple days, and now today we're back up into the 50s and going to be experiencing warmer temperatures later this week, it truly has been like a roller coaster. But don't worry, the weather should be nice for, as Ryan said, the spookiest weekend of the year. For today, our high temperature climbed up to 56 degrees with sunny and cool conditions and a wind coming from the north by northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. As we move into this evening, this wind is going to dissipate and we should be seeing a lighter wind coming at 5 to 10 miles per hour from the southwest. Our temperature is going to drop back into the 30s, but it's not going to get below freezing, but almost at 33 degrees with clear and cool conditions. Looking at the South Plains as a whole looking into tomorrow, we are going to be seeing another return to some cooler conditions. We're about in that time of fall where we have freezing temperatures overnight, but by the time we get to the mid-afternoon, it should have warmed up because of the sun being out. But that being said, we are still going to be seeing some cooler temperatures out there by Friona. It's usually our coolest spot here on the South Plains. That's going to be getting back to, down to 29 degrees. But don't worry for tomorrow. We should be seeing another return to warm temperatures. As for the rest of the day, our temperatures are going to climb back up into the mid-60s. Now, looking into Saturday, we are going to be seeing another round of cooler temperatures as we move into Halloween, with temperatures in about the upper 30s to the lower 40s for most of the South Plains. So it is going to be very chilly on Halloween, regardless of where you are on the South Plains. So definitely make sure that your Halloween costume includes a jacket to go with it. Back into Lubbock locally, we can see that for Friday, we're going to be experiencing a high of 67 degrees, a low of 42, and a southwesterly wind coming at 10 to 15 miles per hour with sunny conditions very similar to today. But for Saturday, for the unquote unquote spookiest day of the year, we're going to be seeing some pretty warm temperatures with a high of 76 degrees, a low of 40, and a west by southwesterly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So for Halloween, we truly have hit the jackpot of perfect fall weather for that day. We're going to be having a little bit of cloud cover, but the sun will still be out, and over Overall, it's just going to be a relatively nice day to go to your Halloween gatherings and go to the game, social distanced of course. And then for Sunday, we're going to be experiencing a high of 60 degrees, a low of 33, and an east by northeasterly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now, I don't know yet if or when these winter conditions will return to the South Plains, especially if they're going to return before the actual official start of winter later this year. But as we all say, temperatures on the South Plains are like a roller coaster and we never know what's coming next, but at least we should be having some nice weather for the spookiest weekend of the year. For MCTV Weather, I'm Madison Harton. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks, Madison. Speaking of Halloween, the Texas Tech football team is gearing up for a rare All Hallows' Eve matchup on Saturday. The Red Raiders are hoping for some more success and hopefully not another frightful night. Texas Tech will be welcoming Oklahoma to the Jones AT&T Stadium on Saturday for a showdown with the number 24 ranked Sooners. Tech is riding a high from last week's victory in conference against West Virginia 
And Oklahoma is back in the national conversation after two back-to-back -back wins against TCU and Texas. Saturday's game also marks the second week that quarterback Henry Columbia will be making a start for the Red Raiders. After leading the team to victory in last week's nail-biter against the Mountaineers, Kickoff is, uh, for Saturday's game is set for 7 p.m., and you can watch it on Fox. Another Tech team is hoping to increase their win streak to two as they also get ready for a matchup with a ranked opponent. The women's soccer team is headed north to Stillwater, Oklahoma for a Friday night matchup with the OK State Cowgirls. Oklahoma State is currently ranked 12 in the nation and are currently sitting at six points back out of the first place in the Big 12. Meanwhile, the Red Raiders finally found victory in Lubbock last week against Iowa State and the team is looking for a signature win after weathering one of their roughest seasons in recent memory. Start time for Tech versus OSU is scheduled for 7 p.m. in Neil Patterson Stadium and you can watch the action on Big 12 now on ESPN+. One other Tech team that is hoping to improve their record has an extra week to prepare before heading into their last three weeks of conference play. The Red Raider volleyball team will meet up with Kansas State next weekend back here at the USA. Tech is sitting at 3-7 on the season with hopes of winning out their last three series before the end of the year. The first game of the night, two-night matchup, is set for Friday, November 6th at 3 p.m., followed by a 1 p.m. start on Saturday, November 7th. Tickets are still available for both nights, but you can also watch from home through ESPN+. With the lack of events on the Tech campus, you may be looking for something to do as we approach the last few weeks of classes. And if you're looking for an option for something with a bit of a creepy feel, just in time for Halloween, then one campus department has an option for you. The School of Art is currently showcasing several of its Master of Fine Arts students' work in the Art Building's Landmark Gallery. Adaptive Behaviors is the title of this semester's second year MFA group exhibition. The exhibit features works from seven current students in the MFA program and each installation includes a personal interpretation of this year's theme. The works include paintings, videos, sculptures, and more. If you are interested in seeing the Adaptive Behaviors exhibit, you can stop by the Art Building's Landmark Gallery Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The installation will remain on display until the Thanksgiving break. So Ryan, do you have any plans to celebrate Halloween this weekend? I do, I do. I'm actually going to be going to the game. Uh, um, I don't know after that, but I will be going there dressed up. What about you? Yes, I will be at the game too, but I don't know if I'm going to dress up because I think it'll be cold. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.